Hello and welcome to a very hot Sydney Harbour for the fifth heat of the New South Wales 18-foot skiff championship. I'm Peter Shipway and I'll be your host today along with Andrew Buckland and Jimmy Bury. And it's a strange day we've got on the harbour, the really strong nor'easter yesterday for the Sail GP event. A day that saw the nor'easter at 25 to 30 knots at times, but today a quite a different day. And to uh, say hello firstly to Andrew Buckland. Andrew, talk us through the weather with the breeze in the, I guess, the nor'west at the moment. Yeah, Pete, pretty strange, funny, hot day and hot 34C. And for, for the people of the Fahrenheit belief, that's mid-90s. Warm enough and quite strange conditions. Sea temperature about 23 locally now, so we're in a bit of a bathtub uh, wind, compass wind about 300, which is pretty rare. Might comprise about 1% of the days of summer in Sydney for that direction. Wind 8 to 18, we'll cover it. Tide ebb with the wind, so smoother water than we might expect, but um, quite a big fleet of, of uh, party boats and other, you know, private yachts on the harbour. So a bit of bump and a bit of refraction. And we're thinking that the wind might fade as the day goes on. The, the peak, whatever it was for today, has passed. So we might see a, soft, a softening as, as the race goes on. And all skiffs on their small rigs, we well, think? We think so, but we, the, you know, our survey is incomplete. But um, at, least, at, at least a significant majority on second rig, which is conservative. And I think, you know, the guys are a bit conservative and thinking, let's get to Christmas without any carnage, of which there's been plenty. Well, we saw last week in the uh, fourth heat a, a real good uh, tangle up between Lazarus and Smeg down at the uh, bottom mark in Obelisk Bay. And that provided plenty of action, thrills and spills for both boats. As we say good afternoon to Jimmy Bury. Jimmy, the course today, we're on the westerly course. Yeah, Pete, um, haven't seen a Norris course yet this year, but yeah, course five, so we, where are we? Just sort of off, we've shuffled the course a little, we're just off Point Piper, and we go from here up to Caraba Point, which is where Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron is, down to Clark Island, right deep down into Rose Bay, all the way back up to Caraba, then where we go there, to Rose Bay, Caraba, and then to the finish off Clark Island. So it's going to be, uh, as Andrew was alluding to, breeze and then no breeze but uh it's going to be fun not not a lot of traffic out here at the moment but so far so good but but jimmy I, you know you've seen this operate port rounding up the top against the high land of beautiful place to do it isn't it uh, adjacent to the high towers of north sydney anything could happen what else is the peat up there yeah. i've forgotten about you know but but a difficult approach and uh very and you know snakes and lettuce OK, well, on camera now, we've got the series leader, Yandu, the veteran, John Winning, who's put together a terrific series so far. He's had a great season. Um, he's been in the top two or three all year in this brand new boat and uh, new sails, new rig set up, a very, very polished performance. And uh, at the moment, he's leading the point score. Um, it's very tight at the top. Uh, John Winning, Fang Warren and Mike Kennedy just going upwind off Bradley's head. It, it is going to be tricky, as Andrew said, as they get further upwind and uh, under the influence of the land. But at the point score uh, that we have, we've got uh, Yandu just narrowly ahead. And we'll have a look at that. At the moment, there it is. Yandu leads on eight points. One ahead of Tech 2, who has had two wins. And Noakes sailing. Uh, a little way back in third place on 17 points and Shore and Partners in fourth spot on 24. But, Andrew, there's um, an issue coming up with Tech 2 that's going to be decided this week um, based on last week's race. Talk us through the situation there. Well, you know, the, the boats operate under a sail restriction system and um, Tech 2 evidently used a sail which hadn't complied with the sail registration issues. And um, there's always a problem because, and in COVID in particular, membrane supply and a bunch of other issues, but an equally, you know, Tech 2 trying to conserve sales to some degree. But um, the protest will be heard on Wednesday, and um, I'm not sure. The penalty might be quite minor, but uh, it would appear possible that uh, Tech 2 will 
incur a penalty. Right. Well, that will be played out in the coming week, and uh, by the time we're back in the new year, we'll uh, certainly have an update on that. But a few changes in skippers today and a few crews um, for various reasons a change, but um, one significant crew change on Noakes, who's been prominent through the year. Skipper uh, Sean Langman's not with us today, but talk us through the crew changes there on Noakes sailing. Andrew? Well, the bowman, Josh Perevsky, who came to all but win the Gilton at his first effort on the steering stick uh, a few years ago, won the first heat in the Nor'easter, and, um, but, but for a couple of issues, you know, probably would have won the Gildan. So <clears throat> Josh stepped off the bow and stepping in for him, Leo Takahashi off the South GP America's Cup team, oh, sorry, South GP team and America's Cup team. Um, Ed Power is the anchor on the main sheet. So we'd expect to see a pretty strong performance from those guys today. Yes, well, of course, the Japanese boat uh, had, had massive damage on Friday in the uh, Sail GP and they swapped into the uh, British boat yesterday and won both races. So um, that was a, a pretty impressive performance. But as we're uh, still waiting starting signals, we're just going off Point Pipe at the western end of Point Pipe and looking up when the breeze has spiked up a bit here again. It's uh, probably 12, 13 knots. It's coming and going as a typical westerly does. But there's other crew changes of interest, Andrew. Um, on the Mighty Tech 2, Charlie Wyatt, I'm not sure why not there today, but Luke Payne, an admiral substitute on the main shoot, as we've seen. Oh, and Lewis might have, Lewis break the normal bow and, and Luke might actually swap spots. We're not sure. We'll, we'll find out in a sec what they've decided to do. But um, Luke's a big boy and a good boy, and uh, we might see pretty strong performance from him today. So Andu is not out today. They're not racing. Sevi Jarvan, Sam Newton and Matt Stenter. But Matt has gone on to the sheet on uh, Smeg. Michael Coxon's back in harness after a few weeks off with a broken toe. And... What's this breeze doing, Andrew? It's a bit of cloud coming over the city now. Um, well, and the breeze is up. We we thought the peak might have been 2:30, Pete. So this might be the peak. I don't know. And it's it's you know the boundary layer is in a turbulent state, obviously. And um, that brown cloud that we're looking at above the Harbour Bridge might indeed represent. The peak because behind it is clear and lighter sky, you know. Is that brown? I must be colour blind. It looks grey to me. Well, grey peak. Yeah, okay, no, it's all right. Okay, I just no. want to make sure my eyes are all right. Dark. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, so Matty Stenner on the smeg with Zach Barnabas and Michael Coxon. That'll be good. Um, and, you know, I think, Pete, for today, if we're going to make a bed, there's five boats that can win the race. Smeg, Noakes, Tech 2, Lazarus and Yandu, I th in my view. OK, well, there's Andrew's fearless prediction. And as Jimmy mentioned earlier, I think it's quite incredible that here we are, basically halfway through the season, the last race of 2021, we have not seen the skiffs on the nor'easterly course. Now, Andrew, you're a uh, historian of note. When was, <laughs> tell me the last year that that occurred. I, never, I don't think, mate. Ever. You sure about that? You're very confident with a no, never. I'm, I'm not confident at all, Peter, because I, you don't recall things that didn't happen, you 1931. See. There you go. See, she, she, <laughs> she, she, and you were in that race, Pete, were you? I was a bailer boy. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, I told you to somebody in the, in the bar earlier. And I but said, it is incredible, isn't it, really? No, no yeah. I, I'd sail perhaps a thousand skiff races on Sydney Harbour. And I think 1% of them were in Norwesterly like this with a compass wind around 300. And I don't recall any of them being particularly much fun. So. No, they're fluky. The, the puffs come in at up, up range of about 5 or 10 knots and they die away. It's a very tricky day. But anyway, we're just waiting for course signals as, we, as I say that. There they go. Five minutes to go. Birkenhead Point Marina. Michael Cronin. Corner. Oh, no, sorry, Josh Ponton Josh. and Alex Chitterton. And that's a new skipper. What do we know about Michael? Jimmy, do we know him? Yeah, he steers, uh, steers a SUTEC at Manly. Uh -huh. um, quite a good young up-and-comer. I don't know how he'll go today. I think this is his first time steering an 18. So, and, yeah, Josh is normally 
Michael's forehead hand on the Sutec. So um, that's in the Alex, 16s out of Manly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Alex has picked up a combo from somewhere else. So good. there's at least there's a, the elements of a combo there. Yeah. Well, Timmy was um, like Timmy Westwood. He sails on the Japanese uh, G, GP team, and he was the one that the boat nearly landed on top of. He was the one you seen jumping out of the pod. Yeah. So he was a bit rattled, and I think he's just having a day to himself. Um, just to take it all in, it was it was pretty pretty bad. And there's the 18 footers restaurant on TV. Pedro Harry West back from the states jumping into a sail. Okay, and we're under four minutes to go, and we're off Point Pipe with a long beat up towards Kirribilli. And it looks like a pretty true beat, but the breeze is going to be the tricky part in the strength. It's up and down, but at the moment it's quite brisk at the starting line. See that yacht well heeled coming up upwind. His appliances online. Alex Marinelli, Darcy McCracken and Tyler Creevy. What do we like on the starting line, Andrew? Which end? Well, Pete, that's the old question. What tack do you want to be on after one minute? <laughs> Tricky one, isn't it? I suspect today, with the funny puffy thing happening, Less tax will win, so I'd be just ambling out as far as you can go to the left and then just tacking and seeing where you end up to some degree. That'll get you a fair way up the beat. Um, tide ebb, so cross it once, not twice, you know, a bit of that. A bit of flow too, not, not, you know, by no means no influence. So if you go left in the first part and cross the tide once, that might get you somewhere near the lead. Got Lockie back on there on the Shore and Partners. Yep. Yeah, return on the Shore and Partners. Lockie's been out for a few weeks for the injury. Back again. Mm. Is the race sponsor for today, the Kitchen Maker. The crew of Lachlan Steel, Jerome Watts and Matt Doyle. Just coming up to two minutes for the start. There they are, Kitchen Maker. And the breeze down again, so it's uh, going to be well, tricky. Uh, do we see anyone on big sails, Andrew? I don't think we do, do we? No, no. no. All on sit second no, sails. So. The, the park Christmas consensus prevails. Well, that'll even things out. No, no absolutely. <laughs> so no one's going to grab a huge advantage no. by having a different rig. No. And we're watching now. Oh, Balmain's Lake. Balmain's Lake. Sorry, off. viewers. Off screen. It's Balmain's off screen. Balmain's Lake going in the tide. So that's a brand new lineup for today, in effect, with uh, yep. Max Paul on the stick and, and Evie. Okay, they're starting to oh, stack up now with about a minute shoot. 20 to go. And no sailing, Josh Probeski, Ed Powers, and Leo Takahashi looking as though they want the pin. They're right down there, all alone, as the majority all stack up here on the uh, committee boat end. Well, Josh might be thinking not much to lose, but okay, one minute to go. No, I like that pin. I'd, you know, it, there's a bit of pin bias, Pete. You're yep. quite, you're quite right. I know if he if he gets it away there, he could nearly cross on port. It's a gutsy call, but 49 seconds to go. And Finport's now in row F again, Jimmy. Far left. Far left. Okay, well, that's, he's going to have to go for a port ender, isn't he? That's no sailing yeah, no, there. Uh, and Pete, the breeze has gone left yeah. and softened. That's where I told him to go. You see, no, right yeah, there. Yeah. Spot on, brother. Thirty seconds but to go. Have a look how soft it is. Yeah, it's like a, two minutes ago it was fourteen, and now it's lucky to be eight or ten. Ten. Lucky to be in double figures. Okay, exactly. they're starting to wind up now. Twenty seconds to go. So there's plenty of room down there for the notes. Yes. He's got plenty. And Finport. Oh, he's going to have Finport. Oh, Finport's down there too. No starting to put the bow up. Here they come. Oh, they're going to get a big jump here. Is they're he nearly early. They're Six, nearly early. Yes, they are. No. Okay, they'll be oh. clear. Clear start. And no sailing got it. Finport down there as well at that leeward end of the pin end of the line. Shore and partners at the committee boat. But... Uh, Great start by Noakes and Finport. That was definitely the end. And away they go. The big beat up to Kirribilli. Shore and Partners tack quickly off the, at the committee boat. He was stacked right up there and he's already can see how far behind he is in the shift to the left. That'd be a minute, a minute ahead after 
Well, yeah. 30 seconds. So everyone trying to get quickly onto port. Some wow. still going left. Breeze a long way in the yeah. left, Pete. Tech 2, Yandu, Rag and Famish all down there at the uh, now getting to the pin end. Meanwhile, and it's down the pressure, isn't it? Look at that. Well, I did mention it, Pete. Yes, you, you did. <laughs> you did, Andrew. You've got something right today. <laughs> Cross it wrong, brother. <laughs> so, it takes you a while, but you're, you're getting into it. Okay. It looks like Finport standing nicely up on, on Port Tat, just coming around the bow slightly of uh, Noakes. But anyway, we're concentrating on the uh, rest of the fleet. There's Yandu still going out. He wants to go hard left. He's got a little right hander, though. That's not too good to go back on. Yeah, but he's not unha uh, unhappy, Pete. He's got wind and he's sailing well, so... Balmain Slate coming behind him. He capsized oh. just before the start in a good squall. Um, and they're the two leaders, Finport and Noakes Sailing. Don't forget, Sean Langman not at the helm today. And I think they're going out into mid-harbour, looking for the right to come back on. And the most left boat now is Yandu. You'll see him in a moment, just above Balmain Slake. There's Lazarus there in the mix. There's Yandu, series leader. He's he's doing okay too. The old fella, he's in a bit of a, a left-hander. So Pete, the grey clouds, I stand corrected, grey clouds yes, they were, yes. were a harbinger of that left-hand shift. Cooler air in the grey cloud. So the temperature's gone down one degree, you know, whatever. It's just starting to rumble here. That uh, Finport just dropped off it a bit. They're taking a the massive header off yeah, of Bradley's massive, head. And so you see now really two breezes on the left edge where we are with Yandu, high left, and a big header to go into. So the breeze reversion to the mean on the right-hand side of the course. See how well Yandu's done. He'll nearly cross this. He'll be in the first two or th three if he can hold his height on port. You can see coming around his bows, no sailing, just appearing on starboard. But Yandu will be, if not, Tech 2 coming through the middle as well. But more breeze rolling down here, Andrew, on the left-hand side of the course. But Noakes will cross Yandu. Yeah, no, Noakes has got a good 30 seconds up his sleeve. But He's working up the middle of the track. And Tech 2 was a little in the peloton off the line. They were on Finport. He's still, still going in towards Bradley's head, the western side of Bradley's right. head. So looking for the right-hander. Well, Finport also simplifying life. Less tax, less current, perhaps. More Christmas parties for Keegan. Yeah, whatever. But, you know, Noakes has done the conservative thing, in a sense. Wow. All good. Yeah. And Tech 2, as usual, coming back into the mix pretty promptly. The thing in the distance, those boats, Speg, Capital Partners getting a nice right-hand shift off Bradley's, as has Finport, who's tacked. They look pretty strong in the right now. Anyway, travelling with Tech 2, and as usual, they'll be wiggling their way up to fourth or fifth at the top, and uh, he can't tack off what he's on now. He's in high right, and so he has to sail on. Not unhappily, though, he's in a good puff. Back to, back, back to notes on ports. So you can see the lead that, that they have. And, um, you know, if these boats go faster until the wind speed's about 16, 17 knots. Finport's just crossed them, so Finport leads. Finport leads from the right edge, eh? Yeah. Who would have thunk? Keegan York, Phil Marshall and Kirk Mitchell. So watching Tech 2 tack, and they're going to go back on a not a very good one so they're probably about seventh or eighth at best and we're probably about a third of the way up the beat rag and famish that's uh, harry price gus williams and harry hall going back into midstream yandu coming working up the middle now no sailing going to become furthest right <laughs> He's in behind the Yandu, but there's uh, the overhead shot. And the two, the two red boats in the middle, they're Sean Partners and Speak, joined together by a rubber band. There's a ferry going to come up the middle of the course. And Pete, what we haven't seen is 
Lazarus Capital Partners. Okay. Yep, copy. Lazarus on screen. Smeg, Shore of Partners. So we see how spotty the wind oh, is here. It's all over the place in strength and yeah. direction too. Yep. I think generally the boats that have gone right have probably done the best. Yeah, the breeze have reverted to what it was about 10 minutes before the start. So back to the right edge. Shore and Partners just tacking. Steve Thomas, Lindsay Stead and Lockie Pryor. There's Yandu Gozer across the stern of Smeg. And a Manly Ferry coming to join proceedings on the right edge too. So that's going to cause some issues. But Finport probably still leads pretty easily, Pete. Well, Noakes is hard right, I think. Yeah, and Finport... Oh, sorry. Noakes almost went in, but backwards. Finport and Noakes. But the next puff is from the right. Finport high right, as high as we've seen. We're with ladders at the moment on the left edge. They're struggling. In about seventh or eighth. And who's tacked. And that was a ferry related tack, I believe. Yes. Not his cleanest tack. There's Smeg tacking as well. Oh, it's, Smeg's almost in the tide, into windward. Did he get out of that? I think he did. I'm sorry, that was tech two that belly went in backwards. Yep. Apologies, Smeg's fine here, working up the middle just behind Finport, Michael Coxon. But in the background, Pete, Noakes has gone further away. Yes, he has. He's found the new vein of breeze on the far right and on the windward side of the ferry. He can't sail in the lee of the ferry when it's going up nearly upwind. And we're just trying to find the uh, weather mark. Got that, Jimmy? Where have we got that? Right off oh, the right point, yep. just where that ferry is. <coughs> the little white ferry. Still a fair way to go. Up in, it's a lot of tricky sailing between here and the weather mark. But what we're seeing, that Noakes has dropped off it and it's come back into the left, and Finport and Smeg will come in front of Noakes. So it'll be now Smeg and Finport. And Noakes had, 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 had a good yeah. loop. Yeah, and he had to bail out, tack under them there. It got eviscerated in about a second. Yep. Very tricky. Oh well, so there we go. Finport, Noakes, and. Smeg the leaders and Smeg's done a good job to come from about seventh. Matt Stenter and Zach Barnabas doing the job for Michael Coxon. These are the three leaders. Yandu possibly fourth. So Jimmy, how are you going to get to the window mark? How am I going to get there? Uh, Straight. <laughs> BMG, mate. No, no. You're sailing a fishing boat, mate. Well, you know, you go back and forth, but I guess, you know, what I'm saying is very big shifts in each puff. So, you know, I think you've just got to try and form your ladder properly. And, you know, if, you, if you're not, you know, you, you know, obviously tack on it and just keep chasing. And yeah. so, um, and like, I've just noticed the marks just in front of the, uh, our boat. Yep. Dougie's actually moved it out of... Yeah, no, he's the, the, a, the, 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 the dolphin's up there. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, so he's done a good job, so this will job. actually be quite good. But the, as you said, the port approach is going to be fruity. Yeah. Now, and around the, this mark to port and then down to Clark Island. Which might or might not be a tight angle, Peter. What are you going to do? Oh, shoot up early and go for it. Swing it out. <laughs> easy, easy lay and then down to Rose Bay. But the breeze now back in the left, which will favour Smeg and Finport. They'll be just short of the lay line. Yandu in the middle there is fourth, and then to the left, Noakes sailing will be third, I would say. And the, and the breeze very streaky up here at the weather mark. We're lucky to be eight knots. Some puffs coming through at probably 11 knots. But generally very soft. See a few bent knees on the crew. Is uh, Keegan York, Phil Marshall, and Kirk Mitchell will lead from the Finport. 
and I, I was talking to uh, Keegan earlier. He said they hadn't won a race with a little rig in since they got a new mast on a certain date two years ago. So he's he's looking for a bit of uh, development, shall we say? Long way to go, but so far so good. He's around with a nice little lead over Smeg. Spinnaker going up, and away they go to Clark Island. Yeah, nice you'd, set. You'd back Smeg in the handling here, but um, both boats on both boats on a good path. Yep. So Yandu will be third. Wow, and Smeg. What happened to what to happened? Noakes he got the, a bit lost there at yeah, the yeah, last yeah. bit of the beat. Yeah. Tech Two's the one that's well back. He's really buried deep. Yandu round. Yes. But there's uh, the two leaders running away with Spinnaker's now, Finport and Smeg. No sailing rounds in a good gust to come up their exhaust pipe. They'll be fourth. And I think it's the Burrowang Hotel will around in fifth spot. But that's uh, you know, two leaders were on. I think Tector's had a little problem of some kind, but anyway. Something slowly here. And there's the Burrowang. Good performance, Simon Nern, Cameron McDonald and Brandon Bike. And there's Lazarus, Marcus, Marcus Ashley Jones, Lazarus Capital Partners. They're back a little. Shore and Partners will be next around. So this Shore and Partners will be six, Lazarus seven. Boy, Tech 2, he's got absolutely dumped up that beat, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I think something happened that we didn't see. He's only no. sailing with two people on trapeze. If you have a look, I, Pete. I don't, I don't think the breeze is there, mate. It's lifted off. Like, look at appliances online. They just stopped well, down not, there. Oh. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, appliances online have just stopped. Look, they've been like that for nearly a minute. They've hove too, mate. <laughs> just pulled up for lunch. Pulled up for lunch. Yeah, no breeze. That's Plenty the, across the other side. Yeah, the, the leaders, meanwhile, have got a really good gust running away down towards Clark Island. Well, we might. Okay, well, the white spinnaker's Lazarus Capital Partners. Take off and go. In front of her with a red them. shoot is Shore and Partners. They've run out of pressure. They're coming up to try and get some pressure. One of those days, the leaders are smoking down towards Clark Island, while the, a lot of the back of the pack are lucky to have five knots of breeze at the weather mark. Wow, the leaders are off. They are flying. They're not going to make that mark, Pete. No, they won't make that mark at all. They'll have to drop and come up. So it's Finport leads from Smeg, Yandu, No Sailing, and the Burrowang Hotel. When will they drop? Will they hope to get a, a reprieve from this really good gust that rolled across the course? And they've still got plenty of pressure. They're well lower the high line for the mark. Speg trying to get up there, Finport dropping now. Speg will have to drop. Speg dropping. Yandu still hanging on, he's a little higher than these two. What's he gonna do? He's gonna hang on as long as he can on the Yandu. Oh. Okay, they're still comfortable on Yandu, just... Oh, that's just not comfortable, not, not on Mike Kennedy's arms, that's for sure. They could just, might just get there, Yandu. No screaming up behind them. We get a shot on Noakes. They're at full whip, here they come. And Yandu will lay, I think. Yeah. He's fully no, airborne. Noakes and Yandu oh, won't, won't, won't have to drop. No, great job on both those, and Yandu's come right up into third, well he's third but he's a lot closer now, he's only 30 or 40 metres astern of Finford and Smeg, they're the three leaders. He's in the yacht race. Absolutely, and has so, been all year. And so is Noakes. 
Noakes, they've got a bit on to try and get to this no, giant they're... mark. Oh, oh, there, oh, there. Oh, Surely. Oh. Probably a bit Sphinx much. just jibed out. A bit much of a bit There we go. There we go. There you got there. So a bit of ragging that's called in the trade, where you just flap the shirt and hang on to your hat a bit. <laughs> it's quicker than a drop and a reset, so... And they go for Kip. the... It appears to swing jive. the camera around back up, up the course. They're all mapping. And they're all jibing out to go back to the big puff that brought them down. And oh, plenty. Oh, wow. I mean, there's some pressure coming down the track now. Yeah. We're on capital, or Lazarus Capital Partners and Shore and Partners. Lazarus on a screamer. And Burrow Angus, he yeah, just yeah, dropped yeah. his spinnaker. He, yeah. he couldn't lay that jibe mark. Yeah. Lazarus dropping. Shore and Partners dropping. Rag and Famish has been in the tide, I think. There's a really good puff rolling down the harbour from the Harbour Bridge. So we don't Burrowang's in that awful position where they're still in that same puff. Now they've just got to find a, a spot to get, get away. away yeah. wow. Tech two way in the background with a red spinnaker we just saw, but we're on speed. So this is what the weatherman was warning about a bit. A little cell with rain in it, Pete. So that's a complete... Like, we're going to have a rainy day. It's going to rain on us with, with a temperature above 30 degrees. Okay, wow. there's Lazarus trying to get the spinnaker in the boat while Shore and Partis is tidy, just coming up to the jibe mark. Rag and Famish barreling down without a spinnaker. In the distance, the red spinnaker of Tech 2. A long way back. For one of the favourites. Oh, bit of action here. Oh, Rag and Famish with the purple shoots have set in a good squall. Lazarus and Shore and Partis trying to get the bow down. Oh. Well, again, this race has provided plenty of thrills and spills, as it has all year, the 80-footer racing. This is the 15th of the championship, state championship. The race today brought to you by the Kitchen Maker. And the race goes on. It's a rather stormy sky, looking westward. There's the Barrowang Hotel, Simon Nern, in fifth spot. It's pretty comfortable there. Chase down the leaders. It's going to be very close at this Lewin Mark, down in Rose Bay. It's tucked around the corner of Point Hyper. There's Tech 2. So he's saying the water relatively smooth, relative being the operative word. Still pretty bouncy. Jive done and dusted, all good. And this weather mark is tucked right into Rose Bay. It's a little dog leg in the course, they're going to turn around Point Piper and go. Down towards the Catalina restaurant. And, and Noakes looks best place to get to it. Yes, he looks very tidy in the red spinnaker. Off in the distance there, you can see on the right hand side, Finport, a little too close to the headland. And maybe Noakes as well there, honey, a bit of pressure. To lure to those are Gandu and Smeg. Smeg, tricky place. It's it tricky. very tricky. tricky. Look at Finport, he's got nothing here. Tricky place. But look at Noakes, he's bow down now. Yeah. So it's going to be between Noakes, Yandu and Smeg at this turning mark. Finport boys just looking around for some pressure. Just a little too close to the point. I think it'll favour Smeg because they're all bow up now. And now Noakes just getting a puff. Yeah, I think the other boys will have to drop earlier than Noakes. Noakes is in a comfortable spot. OK, Smeg. Noakes will be a comfortable job drop, Pete, I think. The other guy's dropping and jiving. Yeah, Yandu just dropping now. Smeg is clean. I know, they're just getting the shoot down now. Noakes, good little gust. They're going to have a bit on here, Noakes. Really, Pete? Get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Simple job drop, you're up for it, aren't you, brother? Yeah, always have been. Smeg, Smeg leads. Around. Yeah. Smeg leads. Oh. oh. Noakes. A little bit. Noakes. S slightly awkward start of the turn, but... But they've got it done, and they're in second. Yeah. Yandu, very soft. And big, big loser there's been Finport. He got high around Point Piper and just basically ran out of wind. You can see Yandu going around. He hasn't got much wind either. 
No, because it's still got the spinning half up or half down, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, but there's six knots of wind. It's yeah, they're just tech two. bobbing up and down, notes. And here comes Tech 2, screaming down. He's got a lot of water to make up. Smeg uh, leads. It's a game of it's a game of find the win now, Pete. Burrowang, Shore and Partners. So Noakes with a bit of a bit of an ordinary rounding in the shoot, not in the bag. No. And, uh, oh, look at Finport. He's just got nothing here at this lured mark. Yeah. And <sighs> the hot day and the windward shoreline. Oh, and Burrowang, look at him rocketing down in a in a ripper. Finport in a drifter. Yeah, he drifts. Burrowang slides in. Tech 2's got so much wind he can't lay the mark <laughs> with Spinnaker. Oh. Tech, tech 2's come back pretty well though, haven't they, from being further back yeah, to the fullback. Yeah, you've got to never write them out. And there's the burrowing, it's very soft. Here comes Shore and Partners. Oh. He's laid it perfectly, Pete. Yeah, and with pressure, then he'll run into a dead spot. Here comes the rag and famish. Harry Price jiving round. Yeah. <laughs> tech 2 coming in on the right edge of the screen there. Oh, a bit on dot com. Oh, Tech 2. <laughs> he's lower the mark. He's got, got, the, got to drop the shoot and get up to the mark. There's some strange things happening out in mid channel. Smeg leads clearly in the distance. And Finport there, top of oh, screen. Finport's capsized. capsized. He's in. Oh, look at Lazarus, Lazarus. At Hello. The, at the Lewid Mark. It's Trying. all over, Red Rover. Put the bow down, and that was it. Shore and Partners wriggled around them, outside and, of them. And just a brief hurry. 20, 20, 20, 25 knots is in the water. It's a real squall here at the Lewid Mark. A little out squall. In the on the face of some rain or something. Oh, dear. Oh, Marcus Ashley Jones, he's collected the mark at the cap size. And other boats in the tide up near yeah. Shark Island as well. I think that's uh, Noakes Blues in. Tech 2 trying to negotiate the jive in a good squall. Finport trying to get the boat up. Oh, there's plenty happening. Smeg still going. But on screen, we've got Shore and Partners and Reagan Famish trying to fist their way upwind. And Tech 2's not on screen, but they've probably over, overrun the mark by about 200 metres. They had their granny tack. There's boats is there in everywhere. Pressure, pressure there is. 18 foot of restaurants in. Uh, Tech 2 couldn't get the jive done. Lazarus just got out of the tide. Finport's trying to get out of the tide. The kitchen maker barreling in. It's all happening, as they say. Okay. Okay. All happening. And, and notes went in the tide as well. But we're on Tech 2 coming back to the mark. And I think back into the yacht race one. And these two look like they came together. Notes and 18 yeah. footers. Yeah. Wow. Tech, tech turn around, kitchen maker, just he underlaid the mark, he's got to tack back. But I think once we get out into midstream and uh, catch the leaders, I think we're going to have a new leader looking up wind. I won't tell you who it is. No, no, no way. No way. He was already the leader. I said, we're going to have a new leader. Just trust me, Marco, trust me. Maybe. Always a maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. Tech two's round at last. And the breeze at hard left and spiky. And more than somewhat spiky, one would say. Yeah. Sure. Lazarus Hartree's cap size has got himself up and going. There's his navigator for Hobart, just going past the background a bit yeah. on Noakes Blue. Well, that's an interesting point, Jimmy. There's a, a lot of these crews are racing to Hobart, aren't they, this year? Correct. Yeah, the URM, the URM's taken, which Marcus is uh, the helmsman on. That's taken, I think, three quarters of the rigging park, um, as far as crew goes. But well, you've yeah. got Jack McCartney on Celestial. You've got Sean Langman, who's not out on the eighties today, but he's skippering Money Penny. Um, a few of the boys on the Whisper. <coughs> got Geronimo Harrison on the Whisper, and and Lind Lindsay Stead as well. Lindsay Stead. Kurt Mitchell's on Love and War. So they're spread across the, the Hobart fleet. Ed Powers and Josh Mesky, of course, with Sean Langman on the uh, Money Penny. A 
What did I tell you, Andrew? We've got a new leader. You're right, Pete. That cunning old devil stayed upright. Well, he didn't tack. Spec put in a tack. We'll come round up and tell you who the leader is in a moment. It's not sure and partners. They're about fifth or sixth. It's not Rag and Famish, it's not the Burrowing, it's not Speg, it is Yandu. There you go. Leads the fleet again. He came round the mark and just put the pedal down and went out into midstream. Speg did a little shortener on Point Piper and it cost them dearly. Well, I think there's a cost of two tax feet very far up range. And I think Smeg might have been trying to just escape the puff to some degree, well, which, is, which is not stupid, of course. Yandu has just tacked off Bradley, just short of the Kentucky Fried Mark, with plenty of pressure rolling down. A bit of rain to the northwest of, uh, of us. Will we get rain here, Andrew, today? It doesn't look like it to me, but I've been wrong before on yeah, that one. Those brown clouds, they're a worry. Oh. There's a purple cloud. Oh, it's purple. purple. OK, we're on spec. Yandu. Yandu. Not much in it, but Yandu across. leads. No, no, Yandu leads narrowly. Yeah. As the... Uh, as the mighty Roger Batham said, if it's green, it means ice, Pete. So remember that, OK? <laughs> OK, well, there's the Kentucky fried mark off Bradley's head that Smeg's just passing. And there's Yandu on starboard, working the middle of the course at the moment. Um, the Burrowang's got himself into third. And where's Noakes? Oh, Noakes sailing. I don't know what happened to him. No, they went in the tide. They had that... Uh tangled up with uh, the other in four oh, of course yes I'm sorry they did there's Yandu nice attack you can see the that's Athol Bite in the background they're on the park zoo and <coughs> Smeg standing in to Bradley <coughs> and Yandu not going back on something too special and a very serious little bit of cloud to the yeah. northwest of us. Yeah. Smeg, Smeg's going to be very close when they come so off Bradley's. On, on screen there, you're, you're looking at a bit of an atomic yeah. blast, which is probably fortunately about 10 miles away. But There's a ferry coming round Bradley's that fortunately has slowed down. We won't just see him in a moment behind Smeg. And there's a great shot of the two leaders. And a few spectators, spectator or vessels of or, various or, or descriptions. Or punters. And uh, you'll see a ferry just starting to appear now. It'll split Smeg and Yandu. But no damage done, really. Smeg being closely covered by a 50 foot power boat. Okay. Yandu having to have a think about the dirty air off the ferry. Smeg will tack shortly. There's Bradley's head. He's trying to sneak around the uh, wharf there. That power boat's not doing him any favours. He's going to sneak around there, Coco. Go up the shore. Yandu, meanwhile, lifting out on uh, their spec, just tacked. Just get right on his road, that power boat. Just stop there. No, the framing is pretty good, isn't it? Oh, Pete's really. power boat reviews are back. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah, just sit on his wind there, yeah? Great job. OK, so, well, that's still a good lead to Yandu. Well handled, though, by the smugglers. Yep. <laughs> and yes. Coco's so polite, he wouldn't actually say any bad words, would he? Like Woody. Yeah, similar to Woody. <laughs> not, not quite so much. But the breeze is up here, Andrew. What have we got? 14, maybe? Yes, yeah. maybe a bit more. Yeah. And we just... It's pretty localised cell. And Yandu's been fast in these conditions all year really got this number two rig working to perfection. So it's a long beat back up to the weather mark at uh, Kirribilli. Yandu going right. And that storm seems to be drifting away from us a bit, Andrew, doesn't it? The rain and the well, clouds. It's raining in St. Ives, but get yeah. the washing in. Yeah, there's a great overhead shot of Yandu. Wow, that's fantastic. So they tack. In of attack, in not much pressure. No. Probably why they tagged. And it's a tricky race course, this tricky breeze. They're going out in the middle of the harbour and they'll see Smeg in the background 
shortly. <coughs> and I think Smeg's done okay, but Yandu will still lead. See did Smeg in a moment. There the he is. Did the vintage 18s race yesterday? Ah, uh, that we know, James. The, okay. So the, what did what did what did he get up to yesterday? The Sal GP gave yes. us welcome relief. He did, what did he actually have to mow the lawn or something? And prune the roses, I think. Yeah. So people to looking at the flags on the Harbour Bridge, Pete. They're in the left. Amazing. In the left, yeah. yeah. In the left, you do. Well, we as we go up wind for the second time, we. I'd like to say, say hello to all our friends and viewers that have watched us throughout the season, especially our friends in the United Kingdom. And a special shout out to Dino Harrigan, the owner of a mighty Morocco View 42 here in Sydney, doing it a bit tough. Dino, hope you're well, hope you're uh, looking forward to it, and uh, we need to go for a sale sooner rather than later, mate. And also to some a group in Germany who watch fairly assiduously. Some two, some short-handed sailors in Germany. And one of our biggest fans, Bobby Dazzler, in the UK. I, I shouldn't ask about the cricket, Bobby, but anyway, we'll talk about it at some stage, I guess. But thank you for, for watching us throughout the year. We know you've been a very loyal fan, as a lot of the guys in the United Kingdom have been. And it's a very hot day out in Sydney Harbour, but uh, we wish you well and a very very happy Christmas in these strange times. There's the race leader, Yandu. And there's Birkenhead Point Marina oh, having Birkenhead. a day to forget. Oh, be nice in the water, but they probably don't want to be there. Smeg and Yandu clearly in the lead. And it looks like the Burrowang still hanging into third spot. And it's getting a bit windier again, approaching the weather mark. We're still about uh, a good K away from the weather mark. That's... So he's just on the edge of this little cell, whatever it is. Looks a bit scary to me, Pete. Do you want and to go downstairs, Go below, Bucko. Bucko, you all right? I'm not watch. I think so, yeah. <laughs> but it, it might turn into... Cuddle. Cuddle. Chits is offering cuddles. It's all yeah, good. No, <laughs> it's not... I think Chits is losing the plot if he's wanting to cuddle Bucko. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but anyway, we move on. And, uh, yeah, dude keeps on keeping on. He's the series leader. In the state championship, this is the fifth heat. He's been there or thereabouts all year. The oldest skipper in the fleet. Been at it for a long, long while. Shippers, have a look what's oh, about to yes. hit here. There's a little puff on the water. There's probably 18 knots. And behind it looks like there's nothing. So very tough battle for the crews today. They smeg coming back on starboard. Still behind Yandu. A test of all components, one might say. So Yandu got to the lead by managing the run better than the other guys. And he's just hung on to it on the beat here. And the bottom end of the, the beat, uh, the, when he went round the Lewin Mark. Yeah, managing the hole. He got out in the middle yeah. quickly. Yeah. Um, didn't panic. We're about uh, three or four hundred metres downwind of the weather mark as we're on spec. The defending JJ champion, Michael Coxon. Been out of the class for a few weeks, just got back in last week after sustaining an injury early in the season. And, uh, and Ricky's got, um, I spoke to him, he was just hopping on the ferry, the regular sheet end, torn ligaments still. It's still at Ricky Bridge, yeah. So, yeah, he'll wow. be, uh, another couple of, couple of weeks, so the, the break will be good for him. Yeah. And uh, a big puff just got him there, jib, jib out, main out simultaneously. So yeah, now it's seeing everything back in. It's a big run now down back to Rose Bay. No, well, and should be nearly straight line, Pete. I don't like the look of this little cloud up here, though, mate. <laughs> You're the weatherman, Bucko. You've got to help, help me. Well, it's puzzled me today, Pete. <laughs> oh, I'll make that very clear. Not often your puzzle, Bucko, but anyway, you are today. There's Smeg tacking. Oh, a bit wobbly. Okay, so Jimmy's observing all that Smeg's ex execution today has been pretty good. Their, their manoeuvring's been pretty much first grade. Big Ooh, puff here at the weather really mark. fresh here at the weather mark. We've got yep. 15, 16 nods in the puff. And the breeze gone hard left in this, in, on the face of whatever this thing is upwind of us. Yeah. Yeah, so, 
attacked. So I think advantage Schmeg there a bit, Pete. Where are we? He's got another ferry impeding his progress. Oh, Yender's still clear ahead. He's just short of the ley line, I think. Yeah, Yender. Yender's still two tacks to get in. Yeah. So probably just about be round together oh, in the that's... end. Tough for the Smeg behind the ferry. Yeah. Have a look, guys, on the right oh, of the screen. Oh, yeah, dude's got plenty. Look at his mainsail. Yeah. Inside two, out. Two little tacks and a bear two away. Two tacks and a bear away. There's a lot on. In half a gale. Smeg's oh. rocketing up behind him. You'll see him in a moment. <laughs> and, and Woody facing backwards. Woody, <laughs> and for the viewers, not recommended. Woody facing backwards in the tack. Steering the boat by looking at the angular heel. Almost entirely. Right. Smeg no, right up their exhaust pipe. Yep. Here they go, Yandu. So this is, a big, this is a big test. Oh, this is it. Th this you is, can get the bow down. This is a oh. big test. Everybody struggling. Yep. Smeg stabilised. More squall to come. More pressure to come. Smeg. Yandu's got the bow down Smeg. and got the job done. Smeg having trouble and just oh, get it done. He's going to hit some waves here too, Smeg. No, he's all right. He'll be fine. Once he's got the bow down, he's right. Okay. Both into spinnakers. Yandu's set. Smeg. Pretty snappy set from the Yandu boys. Yeah, and Smeg as well. And, and pretty cool stuff from the Smeg. And it's going to rain. How about that, Pete? Raining, oh, 30 plus degrees air temperature centigrade. Yeah. The, and city, the CBD of Sydney is getting an absolute drenching. And a rain score. Who would have thunk? And look at this. Smeg's got the pressure. Yandu has got to heat up. And the Shoren partners, they'll get up to the weather mark in third spot. Steve Thomas, Lindsay Stead and... Lockie Pryor. And they've been steadily on improve, and Lockie also back from injury. So he was in a moon boot for a couple of weeks. Okay, they're around. And an improving combination. Yep. Oh, we need to go if we're going to they're go. currently lying fourth on points. Go, go, go. So they're back in the mix again. Noakes will be uh, fourth at Burrowang and Rag and Famish fighting it in for next. Burrowang nearly in the tide. Oh, they're the leaders. They're off in a screamer. Jimmy, we're not going to get them. Oh, this boat we can catch up. Woody's in trouble. Woody's in trouble. No. Briefly. No, he was beat. They flapped the shirt. Okay, there's Shore and Partners in third spot. And now we're at the weather mark. Shore and Partners on screen. They're, they're comfortably third. And, and here's the... Uh, oh, oh! Oh, there's a great spraying at the weather mark. Noakes, bow down and gone. It wasn't a prank, it was a prank with the water. But there's Rag and Famish and Burrowang trying to get away here. And the Rag is okay. hung up on the, um, on the bell line. Oh, gee. he's okay. He's out. No, he's out. Okay. Burrowang was oh, just about to go. Burrowang, they're gone. Really good puff here. And, and Lazarus. Lazarus also just behind them. They're over. There's Noakes. That's Lazarus. And here comes Tech 2. They're around. We'll be around next. So, somewhat by default, Laz uh, Tech 2's got themselves up to about fifth position. All these boats falling over in front of them. Well, very tough conditions. Quite extraordinary, really. Yeah, quite light again up here. And off screen, but looking down the bay, it's about 25 knots in the middle of the bay there. Yeah. We're on tech two. Just getting around the weather mark up here at Kirribilli Way. You can see the white caps in the background, but he's just got a bit of a soft spot where he is. There's Lazarus, Capital Partners, getting themselves sorted out. And in a moment, you'll see poor old Noakes still up capsized. Not much breeze. You can see Tech 2 where he is, just waddling along. But he'll get a puff in a moment. And then he'll pass the Burrowang, who's still trying to get himself upright. Lazarus has got going. Yeah, and you Tech know. 2 now on a good puff. But Lazarus oh, got Lazarus in a way. Lazarus still a bit wobbly. Oh. Well, it's all, all happening, as they say. Oh, jeez. There's 
Tech 2 screaming down towards the Lewin Turney Mark in Rose Bay. Plenty of wind, there's another capsized 18. Just Lazarus nearly about to go in the tide here, guys. Oh, oh, Lazarus, they're going again. Oh, bow down. It's their third capsize for the day. Oh, dear, they've had a tough day, those boys. Rain squall. It'll be easier going to Hobart, I think. So this is a big test here for Tech 2. And they're flagging the shoot. Just trying to preserve over some waves. they got trying to get up in front oh. of them. Preserve themselves over some waves in a very big path. Sheeting back on, I think, now. Yep, good to go. Looking downwind, I don't think there's many boats up right, Peter. The Rag and Famish is still up. You see in the back of the shot? Yeah. And there's... Um, Tech 2 has got himself up to at least fourth. Oh, he's dicing with death here, though, Tech 2. There's the... The Rag and the distance with the purple... Tech 2's coming up for an interview with the power boat, Peter. Oh, another friendly power boat. Without the spinning in the background, I can't give you an update on Yan. Do I haven't seen him in the no, distance? No, he's upside down, mate. There's two in the water just oh. over off Shark Island. I'm just yeah. trying to frame them up over near where the ferry is. Uh, so, Tech two, two, marvelous, really. Get risk avoidance. They try to find line. So we've got two so, base cap sides on Bradley's. It's, one of those Yandu. Yandu and Notes, Pete. That's not Yandu and just me. Oh, and Tech 2 right at the limit here. So Shore and Partners is the one down off, oh, okay. so off Shore Rose and Bay Park. without a spinnaker yeah. up. And then you've got Rag and Famish. And then Tech 2's got himself to third. So both Smeg and Yandu have perished. Yep. Off uh, the Kentucky Fried Mark. Channel marker at Bradley's head. They must have got something, a good squall down there. Well, have a look at Tech 2, Pete. How much wind have they got? Well, they've got plenty. Enough for everyone. There's more coming too, but you know, to see both Smeg and Yandu capsize, two of the best downhill skippers in the fleet, they really must hit something special. Wow, Tech this... 2 are going to drop early, eh? Okay. As you'll see, mate, there's plenty of sea state, despite the fact we think it's relatively smooth water. Relative doesn't help you. Well, really. there's boats out over everywhere. Yeah. Looking up, we'd look at this breeze now. Yeah. So the rain squall eventuated, and probably not going to last long, but long enough to provide another dimension well, to the last bit of the race here. And Harry Price has done a great job on the rag and famished down at the Lewin Mark. But anyway, there's boats over everywhere here. The sky is grey. The wind is fresh. There's white caps everywhere. Tech to what are they? Granny, are they? Going up to Granny, I think. As we race downwind to see yeah. what we can find. He's just waiting. Oh, there's another capsized. Sure, and partners are over. They're over. Wow, who hasn't capsized? No, oh. that's the only. Rag and Famish is the leader. I will lead. Boy, plenty. If they can stay upright, Peter. Well, that's the, that's the name of the job. game. Two sail giant coming up. Harry Price, Gus Williams, and Harry Hall. Have to get this job done. There they go. And they are around and on their way upwind again. Back up to Caraba. And then to the finish. And then to the finish. Okay, so survive the beaten and they are, they are miles ahead, literally. Yeah. Survival. Survival. And have they all, I think they've had a capsize. We, did we see them capsize early? I don't think so, no, Pete. No, right, okay. They'll well, well, be one of the few that haven't. Just to We're sure and partners over to our port side. They're upside down. There's another boat with them, upside down. Um, 
Yandu and Smeg are still off Bradley's head, not upright. No, Smeg's upright, he's coming down. In? He's just going to scrape the point directly behind oh, the boat. OK, yep. Spinnaker up. Yep. So he got himself back into second spot after all that. And there's the rag. Shark Island, Bradley's head in the distance. So they're going to go up past that to the weather mark. And uh, there's plenty of rain over at Manly Way. There's a very grey cloud descending. And the yeah. breeze is up. So the rain cloud, which is driving what's happening on the racetrack, the breeze blowing out of the cloud like a little cell. Breeze a fair way right, Pete. There's yeah. Smeg on screen, back upright and, ru and running. If you're in the keelboat, number four jib and a reef would be good. But it's starting to fade, I think. It was really oh, windy for a while there. Smeg. Fisher Pike Hills, Smeg. next one. Smeg, jibbing. Fisher Pike, oh, we haven't seen much of them, but they've probably stayed upright. And, and the Smeg's sort of comfortable through the jive. There's Finn Ford, Ford, who was the early leader. He's... Uh, Finport will be third or fourth. Fisher Pike will be third or fourth. Smeg will be second. Oh, Finport. Good puff he's got there. The bridge, the opera house, Garden Island in the background. There's the Burrowang. He's got himself up. And now, Pete, as you would recall, sometimes what we see here on the back of the score as the wind goes away significantly. Yep, Finn Ford got the job done. So Bree's actually down looking upwind now. Down to about 16, I think, Pete. And Noakes up and sunning again as well. Yep, well, they've had their, their days, of, <laughs> a day of misadventure, of ups and downs. Yandu's got himself back up. Burrowang. Oh, look at this, look at this idiot, another idiot. First class honours there in the powerboat. Idiot alert from Free <laughs> Shipway. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so that's Fisher Pike all that, and uh, Finport. And so now the rain, the rain upon us and subduing the breeze. It is a bit, degree. yes. It's down to what, about 12 knots, I guess. Oh, 14. Yep. Noakes driving into the mark in front of us here. So, it's just a bit hard to keep track of who's where because Shore and Partners has got himself up, but I don't think he's been round the mark yet. So, so Smeg has just gone round. He'll be second. There's Finport. There's the mark just to the left of screen in Rose Bay, and the rain is just teeming down now. Oh, there's another boat capsizing up there. So Finport not yet in the rain. We're, we're about 300 yards away and it's bucketing down. So there's Finport. Just jibe. Tentative but safe, so I he, might say. So he'll be third. And In port, Burrowang will be fourth. Fisher, third. Fisher and Pikeall, and then no script, no sailing. And I had Yandu coming down oh. wind, but he's he perished again? Has he? Oh, Jimmy, is that? I don't know what happened to Yandu. Anyway, we'll stick with these. That's Finport, Shore and Partners, the Burrowang. They're fighting it out for third. With Fisher Pikeall and Noakes sailing hard on their hammer. Okay, come on now. There's the rain you can see down Manly Way. We don't have to go to you commentators, okay? We don't have a camera, so we can go to commentators. There's the... Just stay here. Shark Island. So and, uh, viewers, we are, um, just have a couple of technical issues associated with the the rain. Yep. Moisture aloft, we'll call it. <clears throat> but what a day. I mean, it started out quite benign and, you know, it was a, just a two-sail day and that just got fresher and fresher and squalls came through. Typical 
westerly on the harbour. So strange at this time of the year, though, Andrew. Well, as, we, as I said, one time in a th one time in a thousand, we get a bit of weird stuff like this. But here we are. So but the anyway, leader, the leader is rag and famished by plenty. Give a lot of points to Harry Price, Gus Williams, and Harry All. Uh, Harry Price only just back from injury, but they have been steadily improving and plenty of talent, obviously. There's Rag and Famish just going up wind, splitting those two coming downwind. That's Nugs Blue with the Spinnaker and uh, the Kitchen Maker, today's sponsor, without the Spinnaker. And they, no, um, the Rag and Famish are going in towards Clark Island and the second boat, Spank Michael Coxon, still off the eastern end to Point Piper. So it's a massive lead. I'll That's tell you, who, who will be having a happy day, Pete, the Boogie. The Boogie will be, yeah. Boats have gone over everywhere. I don't think anyone has really survived a uh, capsize. Or there's Rag and Famish. That's Garden Island in the background. And the picture tells a story, doesn't it? Mm. Moist. Now, Andrew, it's down again, isn't it? Quite soft. It rains going away. Yeah, it looks like 12 or 10 knots. Yeah. So it's quite a comfortable, steady sailing breeze now. So all Harry Price has got to do is hang in there. Easier said than done. But he's got a massive lead. Maybe three or four minutes ahead of Smeg. up on star we're just looking for a little left hand to get back into midstream so i think tech two went home too pete yeah we saw him sort of head that way but we thought he was going to do a granny but we lost contact so there's been a lot of carnage out here yeah what well pretty unplayable puff by the look of that one peter you yeah. know you get all those More, top, top guys capsizing, you know, there's plenty in it. You know, I, I think um, I think Yandu and uh, Noakes came to grief with... And Speak. I'm sorry, and Speak. Yeah. Under a flapping spinnaker, you know. There was plenty yeah. on, wasn't there? Yep. So we're just cruising along here with the rag and famish. Fantastic for those boys, and they're about to attack now. But the breeze, hard right, and back to hard right, and flowing out of the rain school. Buck, I've just got notification that one of your greatest fans is watching. Now, you haven't got too many. Who do you think it might be? Oh, Baz Atkins. Baz, no, Baz, no, no. <laughs> Baz, no. No, uh, wrong. He lives across the Tasman, Buck, aren't he, yeah? Oh. PJ Montgomery. Absolutely. Hi, no, he hi, said he's watching with great interest. There you hi, go. PJ. One of my best to hear from you. Great man, great commentator. Yep. Happy Christmas to you, PJ, and everyone in New Zealand. Meanwhile, could be a happy Christmas for these boys on the Rag and Famish. Well, and, and you know, Pete, they've been getting better and improving and there and thereabouts. They've been working hard, and here they are. Well, the thing is, will they beat the time limit? Look at the breeze. Yeah. It's, oh, that's it's right. just gone. It's collapsed. It, is, it has collapsed. But anyway, there's still enough there to three strings and just, just, yeah. just. There's boats getting out of the capsized positions all over the harbour. It's very quiet up here going into towards Garden Island. He's got a big right hander. He's great circling it up here now, Harry. He's That's right. Almost pointing at the mark on starboard. And, oh, meanwhile, oh, that boat with the blue spinning is. Oh, OK, but there's... Look at his lifting right up here. This breeze has gone oh, hard right. Oh, breeze is going to the nor nor east peak. Out of the side of the squall, out of the rain squall, yeah? But there's no one near enough to make any impression. But no, that's right. Another good puff here. Yeah, yeah, so this is the... He'll be too... He'll be 
Two sail reach in a minute. It'll be a flapping and, and two sail reach. We're starting to flap now. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And then a bit of rotation considering the wind strength. Off screen, Smeg is on on uh, starboard tack, pointing, pointing above Bradley's. Struggling, yeah. struggling to get the bound out sufficiently. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but he's, he's not close enough really to make any impression, I don't think, on Rag and Fash. No. Wow, but these a... boys have been pretty composed, Pete. Here, where they got about 12, 13, 14 knots. Oh, maybe a bit more than our six knots. Northerly, perhaps, yeah. Yeah. We call it northerly. Here come the fleet rumbling up, all reaching hard. So this will close the gap significantly, but not enough. Well, they've just got a little difficult two-sail jive at the top, haven't they? And there's yeah. Smeg in the background. There it is, yeah. There's the Shark Island. Lighthouse and Smeg between Rag and Famish. Just Smeg just going off behind the sails of Rag and Famish. Still see the dark sky, the Macquarie Lighthouse in the background. And they're just reaching nicely through life. But it's a long distance. The camera makes it look a lot closer than it is. But he won't want to stub, stub his toe here, Harry Price. Well, they'll be all over the top of him. Or Luther, Luther Jandal, Peter, in Kiwi land. Yeah, and don't put the I put the curse on him before. You're not allowed to do it today, all right? Yeah. I don't know if you recall, but they were in the top three near the finish of a race, and they bit the dust. That uh, cloud's gone right around Sydney to the north, hasn't it? Now going out to sea, down yeah, through the heads, basically. And again, they're looking hunting for a bit of pressure. Just see Smeg in the distance. They're about uh, I don't know, three, 300 metres short of the weather mark here, the rag. Down pressure and heading a little. And the influence of the rain's field just starting to fade now. You'd be a little nervous looking over your shoulder, see Smeg rumbling up. Yeah, but knowing that you're going into a long head of Pete, probably not. Uh, pretty hard to find an overtaking lane for Smeg. Yeah. It's a fair way back. Yep. Just going round Bradley's head, the Smeg. There's the overhead shot of the rag. Probably about a minute off the top mark, these boys. Yeah, they're laying it at the moment. And uh, Port Jive to the finish, eh? Wow. Who would have thought that? And down in one peak. Yeah, more or less very close to. Just depending. <laughs> Subject to further advice on that one, but. There's a great shot of the two leaders. Clear lead to Rag and Famish. Just three strings, so that tells you the wind speed quite low, 12, 10 ish. Easy lay now. He's just hasn't quite sprung the gear yet, but he's going to no, he, get there. No, he's done well, hasn't he? Yeah. Nice so, lay line, you'd say. <laughs> just bent round and a the breeze went into the north. He's about uh, 15 metres from the mark, and here he comes. And you can see the distance now on Smeg, way back in the distance. Here he goes. Jive on, and just now the run to the finish at Clark Island. Spinnaker going up, trying to go up. It might be wet. It it might be a bit wet, Pete, do you think? Yeah. There's not much breeze here, is there? No, oh, no, he's just got to get going here. Yeah. 
And it looks like a VMG run, Andrew, doesn't it? At the yeah, no, the breeze is rotating yeah. sufficiently. Yes. I think they will get a bit of puff out of the yes out of the bay, but yeah, they will just have, they, get it now. They will have to do a drive. Oh, look at that. So they will lead by two minutes or so. Um, yeah, they could guess it will be about two. And then the real battle is for third. Smegs a clear second, and there's the group going for third. We've got uh, Finport. We've got no sailing. We've got the Burrowang Hotel. And there's one boat behind there, which is... Fisher Pike Hill. Fisher Pike Hill, yeah. Okay. And then you've got just to oh, the right of the screen. Oh, right is uh, Shore Partners. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they're laying down at the moment nearly, Pete. Yeah, they're just yeah, down the out of Athol. Anyway, we're with Smeg, so... Oh, yes, that's... <laughs> Are they going to salvage second place out of that sh yeah, <laughs> shemozzle? Michael Coxon still a sh little short of the mark. There it is. OK, so that's the leader. Yeah, we just that's under two awesome. minutes. <coughs> Straight into a set. But here's the race leader. And now, Enough nice pressure. pressure getting down to the finish. And a good header and yeah. pressure. So yeah. Beautiful. Love you enjoying this, Pete. Wouldn't you? First yeah. win and an 18-footer for the boys. Fantastic. Big day out. Yeah, a very famous family, the Price family. Yeah. Sister Olivia, silver medalist in the Olympic Games in London. And Gussie Williams and Harry Hall. I mean, Harry, the Bowman, big, tall, young, strong, fit. And Gus has been around a while, but... Um... Gus, remember? Uh, yeah, who used to sail? Gus, sorry. Chit's reminding me. Gus X, X of Finport, so. But Jimmy, one of your colleagues from Manly, right? Yes, mate, young Gus was. He's a very good hand. Well, it's been a very polished effort, full marks to them. He won, he won two races at Manly yesterday. On the blue men and moon and yachts. Moon I don't know whether these guys have seen it, but just to the left of screen, where the ferry is, is where the finish line is, and those guys look a little bit too comfortable for my liking sailing too flat unless Dougie set an exceptionally long line I'm getting a bit nervous for them no it's the, the blue it in Jimmy is against the yellow house on the point oh, oh yeah it is too okay so yeah. it's a massive I looked line. at a mark up here so I'd, right. I'd say that Harry, they're, they're, they're right on yeah. Harry, Harry's eyes are better than ours mate yes my guide dog is just having a little sleep up the front All right on son so this is a very, very nice win, a very polished performance. What do we think of the colour of the spinning it? Okay, you like the purple? <laughs> purple rain, I always think. That's what we had today. Purple rain. Well, oh, good on them. Good on them, exactly. Great to see. Same on one here. Well, and it wasn't quite a VMG run, Pete. They're now going to push yeah. hard to lay up yes. into the line. But that's good that's for them. Darling yeah. Point in the background. And in that bay, the home of the CYC, which is the home of the Rolex Sydney Hobart race, which starts a week today. We'll get your uh, weather forecast on the race in a moment, bucko. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to it. Oh, my but God. Speck. Oh, my God. There's Clark Island in the background. He's got about... Uh, not long to go, 100 metres, and the, the fifth heat of the state championship belongs to Rag and Famish, Harry Price, Gus Williams, and Harry Hall. Well done, boys. One of the longest sponsors of the 18s, too, the Rag and Famish, the yeah. Caligaris family. Yeah. Shout out to T Caligaris, a long time supporter of the class. That's a nice, easy run across the line. There we go. Fantastic effort, boys. Very, very good. In in very difficult conditions. A day that had everything. Look at it now. It's a light breeze. It's lucky to be six to eight knots, and the fleet just somewhat drifting down towards the finish now. But this is the second place to Smeg. One swim got himself out of it. Got back into the into the muddy. Michael Coxon. The other. And Noak Sailing will be uh, third, I think, at the moment. We'll have yep. multiple swims. 
Yep. So they, they were fast when they were upright. There's Smeg just an easy sail down there and normally now this breeze. Sky clearing away to the north and northwest. The rain's gone and there's the uh, the squad finishing going for third. So Smeg has got second sewing up. And I would think Noakes at this stage looks solid for third. There's Finport to the, his right. Shore and Partners with the red shirt and the Burrowang with the blue spinnaker. And Finport's there with the white spinnaker. And then in the black shirt is Fisher Paykel. We're on Smeg. Last year's JJ champion. And all in all, they wouldn't be too unhappy with that result, Pete, you know. On the podium, they were upside down for a fair while. Yes. And they've obviously escaped damage and injury, so it's not a bad result, really. Smegger across. What was the distance there? Did you get that, Andrew? Delta? 150. 150. Well, there you go. Oh, there's Yandu coming up wind over the ferry there. He's had a disastrous day. Well, leader. not entirely disastrous, Peter. Well, <laughs> if you're leading and you're now last, it's somewhat disastrous. <laughs> like you're, sti you're still upright. It's not pleasant. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Well, that's right. You're wet, but you're upright. Anyway, okay. the battle yeah. for third. Noakes sailing, or Noakes will be third. Josh Probeski steering today in part, place of Sean Langman to keep their consistent year going. G'day to Sean wherever he is. Yeah. No G'day to Sean and a big shout out to to Leo Takahashi for stepping in yep. straight off the Sail GP boat. And he's... Uh, Ned Powie's on the Aussie boat, mate. Gold. Gold to Ed. Obviously, yeah. obviously he's a terrible sailor, Jones. Leo's dad, Robert Fry, would be watching in Japan, no doubt. Cheerio to Robert. So there's... Noakes will be third, and the Finport... And the margin there, just one minute, Pete, so... Yeah. Finport will be coming down in fourth. They were uh, the early leader, but as we said at the time, a lot were going to happen in this race, in this breeze, and it did. We had everything, thrills and spills and massive lead changes. But at the end of the day, it was the Rag and Famish who triumphed as Finport coming down in very soft air. Boats behind, it's going to be a VMG run. Almost a Finport too. Finport has to jive to get into the finish now. The breeze has got so light. Oh, he hasn't got much wind there at all. Uh, barely. Oh, no, it's just a little puff coming, but but not a huge amount by any stretch. And a good effort by the Burrowang Hotel, Simon Nern, Cameron McDonald and Braden Boink. Yeah, so Cameron McDonald and the main sub yeah. in, so he, he seems to have done them some good, I think. So they're across the fin port. One further minute of margin. Yeah. Oh but boy, uh, this breeze is disappearing quickly. Yeah. Burrowing will be next. So after Burrowing finishes, which will be in about 15 seconds, Andrew. Yes. A week to go to the Hobart. Give us your weather, please. <laughs> For which which part of the fleet, Pete? Well, the start. Give me the start. Oh, the start. Okay. Well, it, would, it seems as if we might start in a bit of easterly now. So there you go. With the breeze sort of east southeast, east south-east. Perhaps upwind all the way to point perpendicular and then slowly rotating as we get towards Bass Strait. How's that? Rotating behind you. Yes, behind. And then a good little southwester in the straight, particularly That's for boats that go not quite the speed of the 100 footers. How's that? That's good. OK, well... Well, remember that and pass that on. Yeah, surely not. There's Fisher Paykel just finishing in one, two, three, four, five, six. They've had a consistent first half of the year. Um, Jordan Gerdes, Nathan Edwards and Kurt Faturis. And following them in will be Shore and Partners. They spent a bit of time upside down. Yeah, they were making a pretty good fist of it too there for a while, but um, they did tip over in the very windiest bit with a shoot-up, so... Always tough. Okay. 
So there's seventh, and then a uh, long, long way back will be Yandu. He's still going upwind, so... Still trying think, to get the water out of the goggles. Please. Yeah, well, that was... Uh, anyway, their day is done and dusted. So that's our final event for the year for 2021. We'll be back in the second week in January for the resumption of 18-foot racing. Um, hope everyone who's watching and uh, enjoying this, hopefully, we hope you have a very, very happy Christmas. And to our rusted on viewers, we thank you for your kind viewing throughout the year and we'll certainly be back bigger and better in the new year. And on behalf of uh, our technical guide, Chits, Piers, Dylan, Jordan and Caleb, who've done a marvellous job this year bringing all these pictures to you and this stream to you, we hope you've enjoyed it. If you are sharing the pictures or the stream, feel free to do the right thing and certainly credit Sail Media, who have, uh, the company that's bringing this all to you and this wonderful vessel that we're on, the, the skipper Jimmy Bury, we, uh, we thank you and uh, wish everyone a very happy Christmas. And Jimmy, to you, thank you. Andrew Buckland, safe travelling to Hobart. I know you're on the... You too, Peter, you too. Yeah, well, I'm on a QF flight, so that's, that seems to be better <laughs> these days. But, uh, I'll be safe, hopefully. But hope you have a very safe tri uh, trip to Hobart. So, as we say, farewell for 2021 from the 18 footers. We wish everyone a very, very happy and safe Christmas. Look after yourselves, stay COVID free, and uh, a good new year. And we look to see you back in a, in a couple of first couple of weeks in January. So, happy Christmas. This is Peter Shipway on behalf of Andrew, Jimmy, and all the tech guys saying very good afternoon and uh, a very, very merry Christmas.